Hi everyone, my name's Diabutor, and today I'm going to show you how to beat Godfrey easily. Godfrey is the second to last boss in the game, and as the first Elden Lord, he's kind of the ultimate badass, so he can be pretty tough. His attacks in his first phase are pretty simple and can be dodged pretty much solely on reaction. However, things are going to get a lot more difficult in his second phase, when he ditches the axe and goes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. This is going to be a desperate, balls-to-the-wall fight for your life, and I'm going to show you how to survive it. First, I'll show you how to set up for my build and strategy to beat Godfrey. Then we'll go over the build, and finally, I'll teach you how to fight him. The cornerstone of this build is going to be our weapon, the Antspur Rapier, which can be located at the Shaded Castle on the north end of Altus. Grab the Shaded Castle Rampart Grace in case you die, and then we're going to head to the west to find the NPC that drops the Antspur Rapier. There's a bunch of different ways to kill this guy, but for this video we're going to use the Storm Stomp Ash of War. You can hit the NPC with Storm Stomp, and then that stuns them, and you can hit them with your sword afterward, so it prevents them from dodging away from you. In case you don't have Storm Stomp, it's in the cellar of the Gatefront Ruins over in Limgrave. Anyway, head around to the west end of the castle, lure the NPC away from the Golem so the Golem doesn't kick your ass, and then just, once he gets close to you, hit him with Storm Stomp, and then smack him with the sword, and repeat until he's dead. When this guy dies, he drops the Antsper Rapier and his outfit. So the Antsper Rapier is a thrusting sword, it does 55 Scarlet Rot build up on hit, and it can support Ashes of War. Speaking of Ashes of War, next we're going to head over to the Swamp of Aeonia in Kaelid, where we're going to grab the Poisonous Mist Ash of War. You're going to need some kind of a ranged weapon for this, because we have to kill a teleporting scarab. But essentially, the easiest way to find it is look at the shore, and then you see this little divot here. Just go a little north of that and put a marker there, and that'll take you pretty close to the scarab. It's pretty weak, so pretty much any ranged weapon should do. I just used fire pots. Um, it would probably be better if you had like a bow and arrow, because you get more range with it. Um, it took me a couple throws to actually land the fire pot, uh, but once you do, it'll die pretty quick. Hit it with a throwing dagger to finish it off here. And then uh, it drops the Poisonous Mist, Ash of War. When you put Poisonous Mist on the Antsper Rapier, you're going to want to choose the Blood Infusion. It comes with Poison by default, but you're going to want the Blood Infusion, because that way, the Antsper Rapier does its 55 Rot on hit, then it does Bleed Buildup because of the Blood Infusion, and when you use Poisonous Mist, it gets buffed with Poison Buildup, so we're going to do Rot, Bleed, and Poison on Godfrey all at once. In order to select the Blood Infusion with Poisonous Mist, you're going to need the Black Wet Blade, which you can get from Night Sacred Ground in Nakron. This requires killing Radon at Redmain Castle. I'm not going to go over that in this video because I don't want it to be three hours long, but I do have a guide about how to fight Radon if you want to check that out. Once you kill Radon, a meteor will fall and it lands over in Limgrave and makes the Starfall Crater. You can go down into this crater and it leads to a tunnel system that takes you underground to the higher level of the Shifra River, which is Nakron, Eternal City. It's a pretty short trip through the tunnels opened up by the crater, so I cut out most of it. Uh, this also culminates in you fighting the Silver Tier before you can actually reach the Ancestral Woods and then Night Sacred Ground, um, but the Mimic Tier is super easy to kill. Uh, you just have to take all your arm armor and the weapons off, and then it's naked and you can fight it with whatever you want. But anyway, after that, head over to the Ancestral Woods, and then head into Night Sacred Ground. You're just gonna run past all this stuff. There's two mimics there, they'll kick your ass, so be careful of them. Uh, but run past them, and once you get to this room, you can find the Black Wet Blade on this corpse right here. Now that we've got the Antsper Rapier kitted out, we're gonna grab a few more items to set up for the Godfrey fight. We're also going to grab another weapon to make this setup easier, because there's a couple bosses we're going to have to kill. So first, we're going to head over to the Warmaster Shack on the north end of Limgrave, where we're going to talk to Warmaster Banal, and then there's also a couple items we're going to grab to the northeast of it. If you visited the Volcano Manor at all, then you can find Bernal in the Volcano Manor instead. But either way, go to him and buy the Impaling Thrust Ash of War, which we're going to use for the side bosses we need to kill. After that, head straight to the northeast from the Warmaster Shack, and at the top of this little plateau, you're going to find a knight riding around. He'll be pretty easy to kill, and when you kill him, he drops the Golden Vow Ash of War. You can put this on any weapon. Um, I like to use it on a dagger because it's light, so you don't have to worry about equip load as much. And when you cast this buff, it lasts for like 40 seconds, and it buffs your damage and reduces the damage you take. Also, right nearby, there's this ruin you can jump down to, and this has the Lance Great Spear on it. 
This requires 20 strength and 14 dex to wield, so you can two-hand it if you have 14 strength, and we're going to put Impaling Thrust on this. Make sure you upgrade it so that you actually do a good amount of damage. You should have plus 25 weapons for the Godfrey fight. I'm only going to bring the answer up to 18, but you should have it at plus 25. I just bring it up to 18 to show you how effective this build is, because even with an underleveled weapon, I'm still going to kick his ass. Like I said, make sure you put Impaling Thrust on the Lance. Uh, you should probably go with the Fire Infusion if you have the Red Hot Wet Blade, um, but any physical infusion will do. The enemies we're going to kill with this are weak to fire. Up next, we're going to head over to Stillwater Cave in Lyurnia. The entrance to the cave is down at lake level, so if you're at the lake-facing cliffs, to the northeast there's some tombstones hanging off the cliff. You can drop down those to the lower cliff, and then there's more tombstones that take you to a lower cliff, and you can use that to get down to lake level and enter the cave. Depending on where you jump from, you might take a little bit of damage from this fall, but if you land on the top tombstone, then you definitely won't die. Just watch your step and be careful not to fall off and die, uh, which I happen to do all the time. But anyway, so land at the bottom, and then there's more tombstones, and you can jump down these bad boys. Now, I made a mistake here, because I like to jump to this big rock, because, you know, it's just straight shot down, but uh, if you slide instead of actually landing, then it doesn't reset your fall timer, and so you can die, so be careful of that. Uh, make sure you land safely. But anyway, so behind the rock, where the jellyfish are, is the entrance to the cave, so we're gonna head into this. It's a very short and very simple cave that doesn't have very much in it, so I just ran through it to the boss at the end. The boss is a clean rot knight. She does this blocking thing that could be really annoying to deal with, so that's why we got the lance with impaling thrust, because impaling thrust can pierce through shields and do like 85% of its normal damage, um, so that makes dealing with her super easy. When she dies, she will drop the Winged Sword Insignia. There's a couple upgraded versions of this, including the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis, but that involves going to the Havoc Tree, so I didn't do that. This gives you an increasing damage buff as you land more hits in a row within a short period of time, which is good on the Rapier because it attacks fast. While we're in the area, we're also going to head over to the Lakeside Crystal Cave, so you can just follow the cliff around from the entrance to Stillwater Cave. The entrance to this cave can be a little hard to find, but if you see this island here that has this little square corner angle thing on it, if you put your crosshair on the corner and then just go directly south, you can put a marker there on the cliff, and that takes you to the entrance to the cave. There's just a bunch of demi-humans here, so we're going to run through it. There's a chest in this room. Uh, be careful not to get mobbed by the demi-humans, but in this chest, you will grab the spear talisman. This increases the counter-attack damage you do with thrusting weapons. So that is not guard counters, which requires a shield to do. That has nothing to do with guard counters. There's actually a hidden mechanic in this game that during an attack animation, uh, be it for the player or any NPC, during an attack animation, that character's pierce damage negation is reduced by 15%. So when you're doing an attack animation, if you check out your damage negation, your pierce negation goes down by 15% during that attack animation. And if you hit an enemy with a pierce weapon during that time, that's called a counterattack. So you're going to see here when I pause it, my pierce has gone down from about 17% to about 5% negation. Now that applies to NPCs too while they're attacking. So when Godfrey is attacking, if you hit him with pierce damage, it'll do more damage. And the spear talisman will make that do even more damage to him during that time. Up next, we're heading to Summon Water Village on the northeast end of Limgrave. On the east end of town, there's a cellar that requires a single stone sword key to enter, so make sure you have a stone sword key. Once you open it, you can run down through it. There's a bunch of turtles in here that respawn when you kill them, so if you need turtle neck meat, this is a good place to farm it. Uh, and in the chest, you will find the green turtle talisman, which increases your stamina recovery speed. So that's going to be useful because Godfrey attacks a lot, and this will make it easier to regenerate stamina and dodge his attacks. For our final talisman, we're going to head over to the Lux Ruins at the beginning of the Altus Plateau. This is located directly to the north of the Grand Lift of Dectus. If you have the Erdtree Gazing Hill, then you can go from that side of Grace and just jump up the cliff to get there, but uh, you can also just run straight up the hill from the Altus Plateau of Grace. Anyway, in the cellar of these ruins, you're going to find Demi-Human Queen Gillica. She's also super easy to kill with the Lance, just hit her with a few Impaling Thrusts. Break the stance, get the repost, and then repeat. 
you should be doing enough damage that she probably won't have time to attack you at all. Once she's dead, you can open up the door behind her, and that takes you into a room with a chest, and inside the chest is the Ritual Sword Talisman. This increases your damage by 10% while you're at max health, and that applies to everything you do, including weapons, spells, consumables, everything. Now we're going to grab the tiers for our Wondrous Physic. They're both located in Kaelid, so the first one is at the Minor Erd Tree in Kaelid. You can get here directly east of the Smoldering Church, directly east of Summon Water Village. It's the first thing you see when you come into Kaelid. You gotta go down a hill to get to the tree, and there's a bunch of guardians guarding it, but if you follow this cliff here, uh, then the guardians won't aggro on you, and you don't have to deal with them before you fight the tree. Anyway, uh, again, we're gonna use the lance for this. Just dodge an attack, and then hit it with an impaling thrust, and wait to dodge the next attack. Every three or four impaling thrusts, uh, you'll get a stance break on it, and then you can hit it with a riposte. Um, so it should be pretty simple. If you have this fire infused, um, then you'll do a lot more damage because the uh, avatar has a 100% weakness to fire. Um, but I just did it with regular uh, physical infusion and I kicked its ass pretty easily. Anyway, on death it drops the green burst crystal tier. This is different from the green spill crystal tier. You want the green burst crystal tier. This increases your stamina recovery speed. We're also going to head over to the Erd Tree in the Dragon Barrow. You can get here really easy from the Base Shell Sanctum. So if you go to the Third Church of America over in Limgrave, then right behind it there's a little pond. And inside this pond there's a teleporter. That takes you to the Bestial Sanctum on the north end of the Dragon Barrow, and then from the Bestial Sanctum, just follow the road south until you get to the tree. This is also a putrid avatar, and it's pretty much the exact same fight, except that it hits harder and has a bunch more health, but, like I said, a uh, lance with impaling thrust will stance break it every three to four hits, and, you know, use fire if you need to do extra damage, but this thing really shouldn't give you too much trouble. Uh, and when it dies, it will drop the Opaline Hard Tier, which increases all of your damage negation by 30% for 3 minutes. So this is going to make us a lot tankier against Godfrey. Now there's a couple optional things that we're going to grab. So the first one is from the Church of LA. We're going to go talk to Kill and get Throwing Daggers from him. He sells them for like 40 runes a pop, so they're pretty cheap. You can put them on your quick item menu on your equipment screen, and when you tap X or whatever your use item button is, it throws a throwing dagger. This is really good for maintaining Godfrey's poise damage if you need to run away from him uh, to heal or something. You hit him with throwing dagger, then heal, and that prevents his poise from regenerating. If you can get them, then fan daggers are better. You have to do a little bit of patches as questline to do that, and poison bone darts can also be used to apply poison to him. Another optional thing is killing Elmer of the Briar at Shaded Castle uh, so that we can get his Briar armor. Um, so the Briar armor makes you do damage when you roll into an enemy. And so the more of the set that you have equipped, there's four pieces, the more of the set you have equipped, the more damage you do. Um, but it tops out at like 20 damage, so it's really not like a great way of doing damage. But it's really good because it also prevents the enemy's poise from regenerating. So if, for example, Godfrey does a string of, you know, three, four, five attacks at once, and you have to keep continuously rolling them, then when you roll into him with the Briar Armor, it prevents his poise from regenerating, and that makes it a lot easier to get stance breaks on him. I'm calling this an optional section because this guy can be pretty tough, and uh, I don't want to make this video have two boss guides in it and make it be three hours long. Um, but essentially, if you stay close to him and just attack once or twice in between his attacks, you know, you can poke him, dodge, poke him, dodge. Uh, it's just a matter of being patient and not attacking too early. And you really, really want to try to avoid running away from him if you can, because when he starts doing his magic floating sword bullshit, um, that shit's so hard to dodge and it hits so hard, uh, it's really easy if you just stay in close range to him. With the Bleed, the Poison, and the Scarlet Rod, he shouldn't be too hard to kill, though. And when he dies, he gives you his shield and his sword, but... Oh, and make sure you teabag him, because I fucking hate this guy. He fucking sucks. Fuck you. But anyway, if you go back to the Roundtable Hold, then you can go talk to Enya, and if you hit Receive Equipment of Champions, then you can buy the Briar Armor set. Like I said, you only need one piece of it, so I typically wear the gauntlets. You always see me wearing the Briar Gauntlets because that's just part of my uh, outfit. But uh, I recommend you get at least one piece of this set and equip it. 
and this will make you do damage when you roll into enemies. So against small enemies, it's good to stun them out of attacks, and against bosses, it's a great way to prevent their poise from regenerating while you dodge their combos. Our final optional thing is to get Boiled Crab or Boiled Prawn from the Blackguard. So in order to get Boiled Crab, you need to do part of Raya's questline, um, where you get her necklace back from him in Lyurnia. It's a whole process. It's pretty short and pretty quick, um, so it only takes like five minutes to do, but I just cut it out of the video for brevity. But Boiled Crab increases all of your physical negation by, I think, 30% for like 60 seconds. Godfrey only does physical damage, so that's going to be really helpful to not die. Speaking of which, we're also going to talk about leveling up now. I recommend you have at least 40 Vigor for this fight, preferably 60. Your character level should be 100 to 125 for this fight, uh, so you should definitely have at least 40 Vigor, preferably up to 60. You're also going to need 20 Dexterity to be able to wield the Ansper Rapier, and 10 Strength. Um, and then after that, it's pretty much just whatever stats you want. If you are using the Blood Infusion on the Ansper Rapier, then I recommend you also put more points into Arcane. This will slightly increase your damage, and it also significantly increases the amount of bleed buildup you'll do with each hit, and so that makes it a lot easier to uh, proc the bleeds on him. In our Wondrous Physic, we're going to be using the Opaline Hard tier, which increases all of our damage negation by 30% for 3 minutes. Uh, this is really good because he hits hard and you don't want to die. Uh, if you have access to it, I also recommend doing the Thorny Crack tier if you want to do more damage, or something like the Dex tier, or something if you uh, want to increase the damage um, that you get from stat scaling. There's also the Winged Crystal tier, which might be better than one of the two tiers we're going to use, um, but I'll talk about that later. I gave it its own segment later on in the video. Anyway, for our second tier, we're going to use the Green Burst Crystal tier. Not the Green Spill tier, you want the Green Burst tier. Uh, the Green Spill makes your stamina bar bigger, the Green Burst makes it fill up faster. So you want the Green Burst Crystal tier for the stamina regen. Um, Godfrey attacks a lot and in rapid succession, and it's good to have the stamina regenerate fast. And also, this stacks with the green turtle talisman, so our stamina is going to regenerate super fast, and it makes it a lot easier to manage your stamina for this fight. For your weapons, you're going to want any weapon with the Golden Vow Ash of War on it. Like I said, I like to go with a dagger so that I don't have to worry about my equip load as much. Doesn't matter what affinity you give it because you're not going to attack with it, we're just using it to cast the buff. You're also going to have the Ansper Rapier with the Blood Infusion and the Poisonous Mist Ash of War on it. You're going to want to have this at plus 25. I have it at plus 18, um, just for the purpose of showing how effective this build is, but you should have it at plus 25 because this is an endgame boss. And if you need smithing stones for that, you can check out my smithing stone guide. So our loadout is going to be the Blood Ansper Rapier with Poisonous Mist. We're going to have any weapon with Golden Vow on it. You can use whatever armor you want. I recommend using at least one piece from the Briar set, but I'm not going to use it for this video because that was an optional segment. Um, but I strongly recommend you have at least the Gauntlets on because I think they're the lightest part of the set. We're also going to have the Spear Talisman to improve our counter-attack damage, the Winged Sword Insignia to improve our damage with successive hits, the Green Turtle Talisman to increase our stamina regen speed. In my opinion, this is the most important talisman for this fight, by the way. And also the Ritual Sword Talisman to increase our damage when we're at max health. If you want, you can also switch over to something like the Ritual Shield Talisman, which increases all of your damage negation at max health, so that makes it, um, it makes you a lot tankier uh, for that first hit that you take, and when you refill your health to full after healing, um, that also uh, gives you that effect back. Uh, alternatively, for the Winged Sword Insignia, if you have the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia or Millicent's Prosthesis, those are better. Um, I didn't get those because they involve going to the Halic Tree and doing Millicent's quest line, and that would take forever to do, so I don't want to put it in this video. You can have one of the Winged Sword Insignias and Millicent's Prosthesis equipped at the same time. So if you have them, then I recommend you swap out the Ritual Sword Talisman for Millicent's Prosthesis. If you want to be more tanky at all times instead of using the Ritual Shield Talisman, then you can swap out the Ritual Sword Talisman for a Dragon Crest Shield or the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. The Great Shield is the best one, but it requires going to the Halic Tree to get. So instead, you can get the Dragon Crest Shield plus two, which is the next step down from it. And that involves going to Faramazula, where you've already been, if you are fighting Godfrey right now. 
So after the Dragon Temple, where you fought the Godskin Duo, if you come out to this section here where you have to jump across these floating platforms, there's a hidden little thing right behind you here. This jump can be a little tricky, but it's not too hard to make. Just, you know, jump. Uh, and this has the Dragon Crest Shield plus two, and this increases your physical damage negation by, I want to say like 17% or 15%, something like that. Um, the Great Shield is an increase of like 20%. Um, so the Great Shield is better if you have access to the Havoc Tree, but the uh, Dragon Crest Shield plus two will do just fine. If you combine that with the Boiled Crab and the Wondrous Physic uh, with the Opaline Heart tier, uh, then we're going to have a fuckload of physical negation, as you can see on the right side. And especially if you put the Ritual Shield on top of it, then you get like 60, 70 percent uh, or even more depending on your armor. So uh, consider using that if you need to be more tanky. Finally, we've got those throwing daggers equipped. If you can get them, then fan daggers would be better. Um, you have to talk to patches in Liurnia or in Volcano Manor to get fan daggers, um, but throwing daggers are also just fine. The very first time you do this fight, there will be a cutscene, and then you'll start the fight right next to Godfrey, and you won't have the opportunity to buff. So cast your buffs outside to the strength of physic, cast Golden Vow, eat your boiled crab if you have it. Then enter the arena, watch the second most badass cutscene in the game, and get ready to dodge. He always starts off with that attack. This is one of those attacks where you kind of just have to get a feel for the timing in order to be able to dodge it consistently, but if you give him a second, then dodge toward him, it should be pretty consistent. If not, it shouldn't kill you outright as long as you have enough vigor. Part of his bread and butter is that dash into a stomp that does like an earth shatter in front of you, so the best way to deal with this is to jump over it, you can also dodge it by rolling forwards, but if you roll backward, then you're going to get hit by it. The best way to deal with it is just to jump. Your jump hitbox is a lot more generous than you might think, so just jump when you see his foot go up, essentially. If you're close enough to him, then you can land a jump attack as you're coming down from the jump, but I actually don't recommend doing it, because as you see here, he has a few different variations of it that he can do, and some of those include quick follow-up attacks that you won't be able to dodge if you do the jump attack. You also saw there, a lot of his combos are really reaction rollable, so you can see the attack coming and then dodge it. In this case, he does this big spin around thing, and if you dodge to your left, then you can get behind him and get one or two hits in. You're going to see in a little bit that this attack has a follow-up too, where he can do like a big rift explosion thing. Um, so you don't want to mash attack, you just want to hit him once or twice and then get ready to dodge again. Here he does a stomp at close range, so I just dodge around to the side. After that, he does this three hit combo. So this actually has one or two variants where he can do additional attacks after it, depending on your position relative to him afterwards. So if you're behind him, I don't think he does it, but if you're in front of him, he can do like up to two or three follow up attacks. So be careful of that here. Um, you're gonna see that in a bit. Here, you see, he does his dash, I jump over it, and I manage to get a jump attack in. So the rapier is pretty fast, so you typically can recover and roll before he lands any follow-up hits, but uh, like I said, I don't recommend it because some of them are just too fast, and it's either really hard or impossible to predict which one he actually is gonna do. And if you have a slower weapon, like a greatsword or something like that, then definitely don't do the jump attacks, because you will get hit by some of these follow-ups. You also saw earlier in the fight, I cast Poisonous Mist on him, so he's poisoned. I also have him rotted now, and I just proc the bleed on him. You're going to see him do his uh, dash stomp attack a lot, so get used to that. And then, you know, dodge the follow-up spin or whatever it does. But yeah, the, the main strategy here is just don't get greedy with your attacks, because if you mash R1 too much, then you're going to get hit because you won't be able to roll and recover. That's that's how it is for the entire game, by the way, for every single boss in the game. You never just want to mash attacks. You want to be patient and, you know, slow and steady with your attacks. Here you can see he enters phase 1.5. This happens, I think, around 75% health. It might be a bit lower than that. Um, but yeah, so once you get him to about three quarters health, you want to get ready for him to do this. If you're too close to him, then he might keep attacking until you back off, but he usually just goes for it right away. He does this big stomp that does not only a shockwave that hits the entire arena, but there's also like an explosion that comes out from his body and will hit you even if you jump over the explosion uh, when you're too close to him. 
So even if you're far away from him, you have to at least jump over the shockwave. Um, you can also roll through it, but like I said, it's always easier to jump. But if you're up close to him, you can get in some punish attacks while he's still finishing the animation. So you see, he takes his bottom hand off the handle and then puts it back on. Right after he grabs the handle, that's when you want to roll toward him. And then you can get a few punish attacks in. This is a great time to cast Poisonous Mist if he's not poisoned or something like that. Um, and then you can just wail on him for a bleed or whatever. So here it is one more time at normal speed. He does his roar, takes the hand off, puts it back on. Right after he puts it back on, that's when you want to roll toward him. And then you can get a few hits in. Don't get too greedy, because he's going to attack and you're going to want to be able to dodge. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely punish him. For the rest of this phase, whenever he does a stomp, there's a shockwave that you have to jump no matter where you are in the arena. You also see here, he decided to follow up this attack with his rift attack. So if he spins his axe around like this, then his rift thing is coming. You need to dodge to the side to dodge the actual hit of the axe. I would have gotten hit there, but I was just far enough away to miss it. And he'll do a stomp, and in phase 1.5, the stomp makes a shockwave that you have to jump over. And you see how the rift is like, you know, in a straight line. You have to get off of the rift before he explodes it. It's really hard to roll, so you're going to want to get away from the area of effect before he actually does it. Other than the shockwaves when he does the stomps, phase 1.5 is pretty much the same as it was in just regular phase 1. Um, he may become more aggressive, but other than that, you're pretty much just dodging the same attacks. Uh, and then there's also the most badass cutscene in the game. Um, I always watch this cutscene, but I'm going to skip it here. But I love this fucking cutscene. After the cutscene, he rushes you with this grab attack. It's safer if you just turn around and sprint away from him, but you can dodge up close to him and get a punish or two in if you want. There I hit him with poisonous mist. If he had any status effects active, like poison or rot, at the end of the first phase, then they get reset after this cutscene. So make sure you reproc poison on him and uh, scarlet rot. You just saw him do a roar, and then he jumps up in the air, and when he lands, he does his Earthshaker attack. So, chances are the roar is going to hit you. Um, you can dodge it, but it's kind of hard to do. It's a lot easier if you have light rolls, um, but it doesn't do damage. All, all it does is knock you down, and then you just have to dodge his landing, which is pretty simple. Once he starts coming down, you dodge to recover. And then after that... You want to jump when he starts the Rift Shaker, especially since when he goes to phase two and a half, um, there's going to be a shockwave, like in phase one and a half, and you just need to sprint away. You have a lot of time to get away from it, so you just need to sprint out of the area of effect. It's easier if you unlock and look where you're going, but um, you can totally just sprint backwards if you want. And then here you saw I, I got I got hit by that grab. I would have died, but the Opaline Hearts here saved me. Uh, here he does another roar, so every other roar that he does will not be the Earthshaker attack. He only does it on the first, third, fifth, etc. Here you saw I was sprinting away from him, and he does this grab attack, and by continuing to sprint away, it didn't hit me, and afterwards he has a long recovery animation, so I was able to drink a flask. Uh, don't double chug flasks, only drink one flask at a time. If you double chug, then he'll do a follow-up and he'll kill you. So don't double chug. Here I got hit a couple times, and the one I want to talk about is this. So he comes up with this stomp, and it's delayed attack, so I dodged too early there. I should have waited a second to dodge. That's something you just have to get used to. And you can dodge his combos by dodging to your left and landing behind him. Here he's going to do another roar, and since this is his third one, uh, he's going to do the Earth Shaker, so I just dodge the landing and then jump over the initial hit. This is an opportunity to heal. Um, just be careful if you double chug, because he might uh, close the gap faster than that and hit you. And then there were a couple delayed attacks, easy to dodge. I should have dodged backwards for that spin kick, but um, you can also jump over it, I think. Here's another roar, so since this is the fourth one, he doesn't do the Earth Shaker. You see I'm backpedaling a lot because he's really aggressive and there's not many opportunities to do something like cast Poisonous Mist. So that's why we're using status effects like Poison and Scarlet Rot here because he's super aggressive in Phase 2 and so I want to be able to hit him with Poison and Rot and maintain damage while I'm running away from him. You see here I proc a bleed on him 
and that brings him down to about 25% health. It's like 25 or like 30%, something like that. But once you get him to low, he goes to phase two and a half, where he does this big roar earth shaker thing. So he does the roar, and then when he starts turning his hands, you get ready to dodge, and as he starts coming down, you want to roll toward him. And it's the same thing as last time. There's a shock wave, so no matter where you are, you have to at least jump. And then he's going to go for a follow-up hit, so when he starts going down, that's when you roll towards him. And if you're close to him, then you can get a bunch of punish hits in to proc another bleed, proc poison, proc rot, whatever. Um, just don't get too greedy, because he's going to follow up afterwards with an attack. Now all of his stomps have shockwaves, so you have to be careful of that. And here I got grabbed and I got fucking owned. Um, and look, he rips your fucking chest open. Oh my god, it's so cool. Anyway, so if you die, when you enter the arena for the second time, there won't be a cutscene, and he'll be on the other side of the arena and, like, edge walk towards you. So this is a good opportunity to cast your buffs, so that's the Physic, Golden Vow, uh, Boiled Crab, or any other buffs you might have. Once you start approaching him, he usually does this attack. This is not guaranteed, like, um, you know, the start of Phase 2, where he always comes at you with a grab. Um, he may do another attack, but usually he does this one because you're at range. And so you can just sprint backwards away from the axe, and then when he lands, it doesn't actually have a hitbox. So you can be right next to him after, the, as long as you don't get hit by the axe when he throws it. So we're gonna look at it one more time. He jumps up in the air. So as he prepares to jump, I just start sprinting backwards, and as long as you're sprinting away from him, the axe won't hit you. Once the axe lands, you can go right up to him, and in this case, I hit him with Poisonous Mist to get that started, and his body and, like, the little swing of the axe he does at the end there doesn't have a hitbox. But after that, he's gonna start attacking, so be careful, don't get too greedy. I'm not gonna lie and say that I rolled this uh, stomp on purpose because I was too close to him, but realistically, I was too close to him, and if I had jumped it, then I would have gotten hit by his foot as it came down. So if he's too close when he does a stomp, you should dodge instead of jump in. But yeah, so just maintain the pressure, don't get greedy. Jump, jump attack, that one worked out pretty well. Big stomp. In a second, he's gonna do his rift attack. So you're gonna see he's gonna do a dash away, stomp. He's gonna come at me with the axe swing and then he does the spin, drops it down. And you see, he can only rotate a certain distance. So if you're on his side, then he won't be able to launch the rift at you, if, if you understand what I mean, you know? Um, so he can only rotate so far for the actual straight line of the rift to come at you. So if you sprint to his side, then you might not have to dodge the rift at all. I threw some throwing daggers to maintain any poise damage I had on him. I rolled here because it was too close to be able to uh, jump it safely, and then because I had the throwing daggers, I was able to maintain his poise damage and get the poise break there. He goes to phase 1.5, so I get some hits on, grabs the axe, and then I dodge, and then get a few more punishing hits in. And here at this point, the poison and the rot will take him down to phase 2, even if I just start running away. Um, you know, so you can play it safe if you want, like that. And in fact, you're about to see, he's going to do his rift attack, and then the rot takes him down to phase 2. So, uh stuff is really strong. Here I decided to sprint away from him, and that's a good opportunity to hit him with Poisonous Mist. This time I didn't fuck up dodging the delayed stomp, so he comes with his hand, you gotta roll that, and then he does the stomp after a moment, dodge toward him, and then he comes down with the other hand, and that's why you dodge toward him to your left, so you're going around his right. So you're gonna see again, dodge the left hand, wait for the delay, dodge the stomp, and then when he comes in with the right hand, you want to dodge toward his hand so that you land behind its hitbox and behind him so you don't get hit by it um, while you're like mid-roll. I'm not going to rewind that one, but there he was like still doing a combo and I went in too early so I got hit a couple times. Um, so, you know, be careful of that. Here's his Earth Shaker. Just dodge the stomp, jump, and then run out of it. I had an opportunity to heal, but I only drank one flask, because if I had done two, I would have gotten grabbed there and died. So only ever drink one flask at a time. This is his second roar, so he's not going to do Earth Shaker. Here he comes in with a big combo, so I just sprinted away from him a bit, and he does that jump, which you can easily dodge, and then follow it up with a grab, easily dodge that. You saw I dodged toward his right hand and ended up behind him, so I uh, missed his hand and I was able to not get owned there. So uh, you generally want to dodge to your left and behind him if possible. 
I got hit because I was being a little too greedy. Here he does another attack and I was able to dodge behind him and not get hit by the second part of it. Here you see I'm attacking him, so I hit him once, then I wait to see what he's gonna do. I'm like, alright, he's not doing anything, so I go for another attack, and as I do that, he goes for this grab. That's why it's really important to just not mash R1, because if I had hit R1 again, then I wouldn't have been able to dodge that grab, and I would have been dead. Now he's entering phase two and a half, and here I got greedy and tried to poison mist him between the two hits, and I ended up getting hit there. It's better to wait for a long attack like that after he does the second hit. And I just want to point out here, so he does his jump, I dodge the landing, and there's a shock wave, so you have to jump that, and then when he brings his other hand down, there's a second shock wave that you have to dodge, and then just keep sprinting until you get out of the area of effect. Good opportunity to heal, but only drink one flask. I got lucky not to get hit there when I drink two. At this point, his health is so low, and since he's poisoned and rotted, I can just run away from him and let him die. You know, I can just keep dodging him and dodging him. Um, but I decided to end the fight on purpose because I, I wanted to, you know, show another run. I also want to draw your attention to this attack that he did. So you see, we're going to watch this in regular speed again, but you see he does this really long wind-up, and I'm just sprinting away from him. When he does this long wind-up, he's going to come at you really fast and for a really far. You can't dodge this. You have to be sprinting away from him to dodge that. So you see, again, there's that really long wind-up. If you're close to him when he starts that, you need to start sprinting away immediately. One more time, long ass wind up, just get the fuck out of there, run away, and wait for him to finish the combo. And then here, funnily enough, I was trying to let him kill me, but he missed. Um, and so he died, and I had to quit out, or else I wouldn't have been able to get uh, footage of another run. So, yeah. So, I've mentioned a couple times, there's the winged crystal tier, and if you put that in your physic, then it gives you light rolls for three minutes. Light rolls are really strong, so I decided to try a run where I swapped out the stamina regen tier with the winged tier instead. You can get the winged tier from near the hermit merchant shack over here. So, there's a minor erd tree, that is not where the tier is at. You see there's like a cliff here, it's on top of this cliff, and it's in a basin surrounded by a bunch of skull snails. So that's where you get the winged tier, not at the base of the minor erd tree. There's a different crystal tier there. Light rolls are a lot faster, and they go a lot further than medium rolls, and they also get like one or two extra iframes, I think. So they can make it really easy to dodge a lot of attacks that are not necessarily impossible to dodge, but are a lot harder to dodge with medium rolls. So you see here, like, it's a lot easier to end up behind him um, when I roll his attacks, so in phase two that's going to be really important. There I had such good positioning I didn't even need to dodge that spin around swing that he did, I just walked to the side. So yeah, light rolls can really make a really major difference, that's why you usually see, um, if you ever watch no hit runs, the guy is usually not wearing armor, not because, you know, there's no point in wearing armor, because if he gets hit, then the run's over, but because light rolls are really, really strong and make it a lot easier to dodge every attack in the game. Except for that one, because I fucked up, but that was my fault. Here he did his charge thing again, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to double chug, because that would have hit me um, if I had drank two flasks uh, after his rift attack thing. You're gonna see, I'm gonna get a poise break on him in a second, and I tried to go to his side because I didn't want to get the repost. It's better if you hit him a bunch of times instead of getting one big hit with the repost, but I did a backstab by accident, so um, yeah, I fucked that up. But yeah, dodge his roar thing, get a few more punish hits in. At this point, his health is low enough that I can just let the rot and the poison uh, bring him down to phase two if I wanted, but I keep up the pressure just to make it a bit faster. Here's a better example of what I was talking about earlier, like about him rotating with his rift attack. See, so you see, he comes down with it, and then when he puts his foot on it, you're gonna see he starts to spin toward me so that the rift like comes at me. He can only rotate like 30 degrees there, so the rift won't hit you if you sprint off to the side um, at the right angle. Um, it didn't matter there though, because the shockwave made me have to jump dodge it anyway. Hit him with Poisonous Mist to start this phase. Here I see him start to go for that big ass wind up again, so I just turn and sprint away. Doesn't reach me. He does a follow up at the end of it if you're close enough to him. We saw there I was able to dodge the roar because the light rolls allow me to go far enough away to make it really easy to dodge it. 
hit him with some throwing knives to maintain his poise damage, and then just wait for him to come to me. You have two options to dodge this grab, so if you want to play it safe, you can dodge past him and end up further away from him, but I like to dodge backwards so I land right next to him, especially with light rolls, it makes you land right next to him, and then you can get a couple punish hits while he's still recovering from the attack and then just get ready to dodge afterward. There I dodged backwards like an idiot, so I got hit by the shockwave on the stomp. Here I was at low health, and fortunately he did that grab, so I sprinted away and took the opportunity to heal. Got lucky that he didn't hit me when I double chugged. Here he comes in for a couple stomps, dodge toward him so I don't get hit by the shockwave, dodge behind him. He does a big hit with his hand, and I dodge behind him to dodge the hitbox. Uh, accidentally get a repost there, but hey, you know, it's better than not getting a repost, right? And then now he's going to phase 2.5, hit him with a punish hit, dodge. Could have punished him here, but I played it safe. Dodge, and then a couple more punish hits. At this point, the rot and the poison will kill him if I just keep running away. So, uh, at this point, as long as you don't die, you know, the, the fight's done. And in fact, that's precisely what I'm going to do, um, because I can. So, you know, hit him one more time, and then I'm like, you know what, fuck you, I'm done. Ow. Wait. Wait. Yeah, fuck you, Godfrey. Though, actually, this one didn't count as a win because, um, I died too early. He has to finish his dialogue and you have to see Legend Feld come up on the screen, uh, in order for it to actually finish the fight. You're gonna see here, uh, the fog wall's still there, so I didn't actually win. Anyway, so I'm not gonna go over the whole fight again, but I wanted to show me actually, uh, beating him, so, uh, here is that. I want to say here, you're going to see I don't quite make it, so I do a sprint jump. That gives you, like, ever so slightly more distance, and it can uh, make a difference in actually running away from things. Um, so if you feel like you're not going to make it when you, like, sprint away from something, uh, try doing a, a sprint jump. And then here he is. I just wait for him to die. Fuck you, horror loop. But anyway, so that's the end of the fight. Um, if you keep dying to him, just, you know, be patient and keep trying. It's, it's all about practice, you know, learning when to dodge his attacks, learning which direction to dodge in. It's the entire name of the game is, you know, try and try again until you've mastered it. Um, so yeah, just, just don't give up. That is this game's fail state. When you give up, that's when you lose. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Please leave a like and consider subscribing. Leave any, uh, questions or feedback you have down below. And I'll catch you later.